Welcome to the first Lunch and Learn session dealing with code issues that are relevant to the HVACR industry. Our plan is to provide a short session, 15-20 minutes, on the second Monday of each month. The format is for you to grab a burger and some fries, open your computer or phone, and listen into the issues that you might otherwise not know about until the inspector turns down the job. Before we begin, we do need to take a moment to express our appreciation to the Department of Labor and Licensing and their section secretary, Lindsay Moore. In the past year, Lindsay has made a lot of changes that will make your life easier. Uh, for example, being able to renew your license online and broadcasting the hearings in Zoom. These Zoom meetings are open for everyone to attend on the second Wednesday of each month at 10 a.m. You're welcome. Today we have Tony Woodard, Chief Inspector for the HVACR program, and Charles Covington, Chief Inspector for the electrical program. They're good guys. And having been in the industry for many years, are able to address the code from the perspective of a contractor, an inspector, and most importantly, a consumer. Let's ask, We've been going along here a long time and hadn't had to worry about this. What What is the issue that we're having to address? Well, the issue seems to be mostly a lot of multifamily dwelling. We have apartments, dormitories, townhouse type uh, occupancies. And it's where we have multiple condensers staged up or stacked together. Uh, and the communication of the line set's being stubbed out at one time and the disconnects of the main power for the disconnects being stubbed out at one time. We're just not communicating together to allow the clearances for both codes. We need a clearance for the electrical disconnect, main walking area so we don't have trip hazards for electrical reasons. We also have to have our main clearances for access to our equipment. Uh, in our field, we've just accepted the fact that we kneel down on line sets, stand on them, step <laughs> over them, and so forth. But We've got to do better, and we're going to work with the electrical department, and Charles can explain a little better. We, I believe in the past, we've had a few electrical uh, folks get electrocuted, you know, on disconnects, being grounded, and so forth, and we're trying to do better. That's what we're doing today. We have sections of the electrical code coming up. Let's cover those real quickly, and then we want to ask Charles why. Next slide, Tony, if you will address the... Uh, the verbiage of the mechanical code on this. Right, it's it's pretty simple. We're, we're looking for a 30 by 30 clear standing platform, whether you're on grade or like when you're in your attic, you have your platform, your plywood area, your kneeling down surface. And we need a three foot from the removing of the panels as you address that walk straight forward. That's where the three foot measure comes into place. And I believe that'll be the same when we get to the disconnect as well but we, we need that 30 by 30 working platform in front of the appliance where we service it with a three foot depth in the front panel. Okay, that's something that we've been accustomed to for several years now. Yes, sir. Uh, but now then all of a sudden, mechanical code, HVAC folks are, are saying we need to pay attention to the electrical code as well. Uh, some either Charles, you or Tony address the electrical code if you would please. I got a couple of slides here where it talks about it. Go ahead, Charles. And Tom on this electrical code, this has been in the code for many, many years. It's not something that just came out recently. And what we have to realize is that we have to have 36 inches in front of that equipment. I tell everybody the best way to realize that is that if you were to get shocked you need to be able to fall backwards to get out of there. If you don't, you're going to sit there and burn. And the 36 inches will get you pretty good unless you start dealing with 480 volt. And then if you look at condition two, which talks about uh, open panel or a disconnect with a metal object behind you, like a condenser unit, then you got to have 42 inches. But most of the time with what we're dealing with today, the three foot of clearance will give you from the face of that disconnect, there can't be anything behind you for three feet where you can fall out of that equipment if you were to get shocked. Okay, we've got some pictures that's gonna help illustrate that, I hope. Uh, here's some examples of equipment that's out there in the field. And Tony, these are some pictures that you took. So if you will address those, that would be good. In fact, you know, as I'm thinking about it, maybe we come to here 
and look at this and then go back and look at examples. So was that okay? Yes. Yes. This would this is this is what you're after right here. This is what we're really looking for. You'll notice the line sets are out of the clearance path for the appliance. What we're calling at this time the appliance is our disconnect. We're maintaining our three foot clearance. We have our 30 inch width. And I was a little confused on that. I was thinking that'd be 15 left or right of the disconnect. And Charles has straightened us up on that. We have our clearances left or right of the box and we're, the errors are showing our 36 inch clearance without standing or falling on line sets. The line sets are to the right or the left. This, this is what we're trying to maintain right here. Okay. One of the things in the next two slides, it shows that in this one, it shows there's an equal distance on either side of these two disconnects, but that's not required, is it? That would be legal there as well. Is that correct, Charles? Yes, as long you just got to remember, as long as you can get up to it, it can be 30 inches from the right. It's showing there the other way or 30 inches opposite side. We just got to have 30 inches. Tom, that's perfect. Now, if you've got more than three or four there, you know, you've got several of them, you still got to have that clearance. But it, if you've got several stacked there together, you've got to have the clearance from that outer edge on that first one all the way over across to the other. The greater so far, the I'm sorry, so if our bank of disconnects, say we had 12 disconnects and we were able to put six of them here and we had a total width of six feet, we're looking for six foot of clearance right there. Is that correct? As long as you're from the edge of that disconnect over to the outside edge of the other. Okay. You've got to be able, you can't have just 30 inches and then you got one disconnect over where you can't even get to because of equipment or something. So yeah, you've got to have that outer clearance. Okay. We're going to go back now and look at some of those slides that Tony did that we referenced earlier. And uh, so Tony, you can address maybe some of these examples of pictures that you took out there. Yeah. In the field. This is at Fort Chaffee. And when I stretch the picture, it, it looks like the condensers are up against the building. They're, they're actually about two foot away from the building. Uh, now the disconnect handle is it, uh, I believe it's passed. I'm, I would like Charles to leap in here, but I've passed this on numerous occasions is calling this a legal install. Charles, is this legal? Yeah, and Tony, what you do there is you just pick up a two before or straight edge and you lay against that unit and go back to the wall and see if that disconnects falls out. If you'll notice that one on the right hand side there looks like there was an issue originally to start with. So they came out of that FS box and extended over to the right hand side. So yeah, if it's at the edge of that disconnect going out, then I am tickled to death. Okay. That would be the that would be the inside of the disconnect. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I see you, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, there straight down, yes. Yeah, yeah here's yeah, let me Let me clear that so nobody, nobody holds me against, holds that against me. Here we go. So we would be looking at, at uh, let me see if I can make that drawing again. The we'll straight down. Like you, here, yes, straight down. Straight down. Yep, to the edge of that unit. As long so as I actually would be straight right, down to here, wouldn't it? Yeah, yep. as long as I'm to the right of that, I'm okay. You know, I think there's another picture, Tom, of, of the, these are the old barracks. I think there's another picture that shows that. I was on an angle at this and I wasn't straight on. I think I've got- All right, let me, uh, let me get us back over there where we can look at that again. That's a, there you go. And you can see, as Charles said, where they moved them out. Mm -hmm. And you can clearly say they're outside of the condenser unit. Yeah. And also, uh, we will get to this. It's like right there. Look on the right-hand side. You see that green box under there? Underneath that disconnect? Right. Yeah. It's, we can come out six inches past the face of that disconnect, but if that was something that extended out more than six inches there, it would be in the way also. Okay. Hmm. That's a good point. What, what is that, Tony? What is that green box? I believe that's some kind of data communication okay. box. It wasn't there at, on the roughs, and I'll be honest, I took this picture, I didn't even pay attention to it. 
I was focused on the line sets and the, <laughs> the electrical. Charles sent me a bunch of drawings and I looked at them and decided that I was certainly glad that I was an HVACR and I didn't have to know electrical as well. This, this becomes pretty simple the way you're, you guys are explaining it today. Here's the next one. Right. And I don't believe, I, I, I believe Derek Daniels had made correction. And I think these are, these are the ones that started the conversation. And I really believe those disconnects might be moved out to those unistruts that are mounted there. I haven't been back on this. This is a, a new building at Fort Chaffee, but this was what uh, got the attention of, yes, I see what we're looking for here to where if our box and our line set, this conduit would have followed over to our line set, even maybe moved the line set a little more. And the one on the right would have moved more, right? We would have met the code. So as I, as I kind of see things, um, the whole idea, let me get to where I can, is it right here, this line set, is that we've never really never had to do a lot of thinking about where the line set was. Correct. So now that we're going to have to start thinking in advance about where we place the line set relative to the disconnect. Yes, we're going to have to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. Here's the side view of that one. Now, this is the side view of the same building, but these are the three on the east side of the building where you can clearly see the three foot out in front. We're maintained there, but on the straight deal, like, like as Charles was saying now, this is a good one because these, I would say, you'd have to have 15 inches left to right of each disconnect, would you not, Charles? That's true. Now, the okay. one on the left-hand side, on the left-hand side there, if you had 30 inches to the right, that one in the center, you could go left to right either one. And, you know, we've got the clearance out in front of it, but we've got these line sets. The one on the left-hand side, if you came over 30 inches, that line set, if it was back against the wall there, we'd be okay. And the one in the center, I can't see the one on the right hand side. Yeah, the line set would be back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we've had situations like this in industry where they've had to build a platform to, to go above the line set. Because to be honest with you, I'm uncomfortable working around a disconnect trip hazard, but also I don't want to be stepping on those lines to knock your insulation off and possibly damage your lines. Because my old saying, the best that will ever be is the day we install it. It will never get any better. <laughs> okay, Charles, looking at this picture, would, would the one in the middle, like over here, we can address this and get to it. Is the one on the right and left legal and just the one in the middle, the one that needs addressed or the one on the right side need addressed as well? Well, now, Tony, the way that's looking on the right-hand side, we may be okay. I'd have to look at the electrician, see if, He's actually got in the way, but yeah, because remember, if, if I come up to that disconnect on Tom, can you go back to that previous slide? Yes, right sir. Well, there All we right. Are. right there. All right. The one on the right hand side, if you'll notice, actually the electrician's in trouble because he's got his line out there in the way. But other than that, your line set, yeah, if it was out a little bit more, you could get to it because we are coming out in that 36 inches out in front of it. So the, the only one that's right is the very far left condenser. Yeah, because we, well, when you, yes. Now your line set going to that one on the left-hand side there, it's kind of iffy about how far out in front of it is, but I wouldn't push that issue. Okay. Because the one on the left-hand side, you've got the clearance there. You could walk, walking in there, you're going to have to step on that line set, but that might be an issue there. But you so we're coming up on uh, 15 minutes pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, where? What about this one? The okay. ones on the left-hand side looks pretty good. One on the right, we may have trouble with clearances. See, I, I passed this one. I thought this was legal. When you go to the next picture, Tom, I think you'll see. Okay, that one I knew, the next picture. Right. This one. Yep. You've got the clearance. Okay. Yep. All right. This one, no. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got a little busy right there. <laughs> uh, only a little bit, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and again, I think it always is going to boil down to, you know, our industry can do whatever you want us to do. We just have to know. Sure. And and the the explanation has to be pretty clear. 
I hope that drawings like this helps to make it reasonably clear. Uh, you, we've got about another minute here, Tony or Charles. Y'all want to weigh in on on these uh, three drawings again? No, Wait, no. Hardage, what? No, you okay. well covered it, Tom. I think okay. you did. All right. So from side to side, as long as there's that 30 inches there, we're doing pretty good. 30 inches are are the total width right. where we can get to it. Yes. Thank you, Charles. I'd like to go farther into it, but we've run out of time. And thank you, Tony, for taking time out of your busy schedule to bring reminders and updates to the Arkansas HVACR industry. This Lunch and Learn has been a partnership of the Arkansas HVACR Association and the Arkansas Department of Labor and Licensing. Schedule to tune in the second Monday of each month at 12 noon. Put it on your calendar. And remember this, education is the best form of regulation Partnership creates an atmosphere of camaraderie and success toward a mutual goal. See you next time.